It doesn't matter what year you are. I'm head of the associates. If I give you an assignment, you do it. Hey, everybody. This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. It's never a dull day in the world of the royals. So we've all seen this media campaign that was pushed out today about the christening of Lily Bucks. I'm sure many of you, including myself, yawned with absolute boredom. So, of course, they gave the exclusive to People magazine in which they confirmed that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex held a christening for their 21-month-old daughter last Friday in a small and intimate ceremony at their home in Montecito, California. So it's actually irrelevant that they're calling this little girl as Princess Lilibet. It really is, because since the Queen passed away, the Sugars, as well as Meghan's media team, they have been pushing for this princess title. I think right now, doing this was just an excuse for them to push this out further and get momentum behind it in order to force the hand of the king in order to change the website. Nothing has changed. It's still Master Archie and Miss Lilibet Diana. In my opinion, this reeks of desperation in order to stay relevant and tied to the family. The family who so treated you so terribly and were so racist. So what we're seeing on top of this barrage of propaganda that's being pushed out about Lily's christening is also Nagazi Fagazi going on TV complaining that she didn't get a public apology from the royal family, even though she got global press coverage of the sit down with Lady Susan Hussey. Lady Susan Hussey apologized to her in person. None of that was good enough. And here she is on TV today complaining. Her life has been so terrible since the incident and that her foundation has suffered monetarily and she had to step down as CEO. Well, she's not being 100% honest with everybody because her foundation is currently being investigated and audited because there is suspicion of misappropriation of funds. But don't you worry, Nagazi Fagazi, I'm sure, has another grip going on the side. Could this Sussex squad... Sugar be on the payroll of Meghan Markle? Possibly. When you're dealing with a vengeful and spiteful person like Meghan Markle, apologies don't mean anything. Let's go back to what happened with Jeremy Clarkson. So Jeremy Clarkson emailed Meghan Markle and apologized her, but that wasn't good enough. Does anyone really believe that Nagazi Fugazi would have been satisfied with a public apology published? No. Most likely, what she was looking for was some type of monetary apology from the family. But going back to this incident with Jeremy Clarkson and the two organizations that filed this investigation, the Fawcett Society and the Wild Foundation, well, did anybody know that the Wild Foundation was recently registered in 2022? But going back to this organization who filed uh, an investigation with IPSO, to investigate Jeremy Clarkson, looking deeper into who is a part of this wild foundation, who is surprised to see Sister Space in the contact section. Now, while Nagazi Fagazi had been whining and moaning on television today about having to step down as CEO of Sister Space because of all the bad press that she received or whatever BS that she was spewing, know that the company is being investigated and audited. And most likely, if we want to find her, I'm sure we could find her at the Wild Foundation. The Wild Foundation, who submitted those cases for Ipso to investigate Jeremy Clarkson for the opinion piece that he wrote about Meghan Markle. Hmm. Who is the dominant force in all of this mess? It's Meghan Markle. Now, I just want to say it's not a coincidence that all of this pressure has been put on top of the royal family as part of a campaign to continue to take down the monarchy because you have two people in California who cannot stand seeing that they are no longer a part of something that they stupidly decided to leave. We have seen in many instances where Meghan and Harry support the Sussex squad, which majority of them support the Abolish the Monarchy movement or the Anti-Monarchist movement. 
Do I think that all of this was orchestrated to overshadow and suppress the press or the media around the Princess of Wales and the work that she was doing with the Irish Guards as the colonel? I mean, this woman, talk about fierce and talk about being a real boss on International Women's Day. What a role model Catherine is. You look at her, she is into the work that she is doing and genuinely caring about the military, as opposed to those two wastes in California who all they want to do is sit back and collect checks and grift off the back of people who are suffering and vulnerable. Like none of that is enviable. None of that is something to be proud of. And none of that is to be respected. Catherine is a global leader. Catherine is one who can influence others for the better. Catherine makes you want to be better. So now you can understand why Meghan is so jealous of Catherine, the Princess of Wales. It's because she will never reach the status nor level of beauty, class, and just pure grace. You know, it really is a breath of fresh air to look at Catherine. The energy that she gives off is so positive and it's so bright, as opposed to when we look at the other one, it's like this just evil emanating from it. But I hope that this little piece here is a little palate cleanser. I do have to continue on in finishing this video, but this is what she's up to. And I think that it's so cool. So going back to these anti-monarchists, aka sugars, who are not the brightest in the shed, completely disclose what the agenda is, where this one says, Jassamagirly says, the smartest thing they did was use princess in their statement for Lilibet, daring that fool of a king to do something. Checkmate, biatch. Smart, Harry and Meghan, smart. So there you have it, folks. Exactly what this idiot just disclosed to think that they're putting pressure on the king to change the website, the king is not going to do anything. I'm telling you this right now. In fact, the fact that this person has put this out there, I hope somebody from the palace is watching this video to show the king that, yeah, this is exactly what Meghan and Harry, they normally do is to try and force the hand of the monarch by putting pressure in the media. And that's exactly what is going on. Look, it's fine. If they want to call their child princess, fine. This is America. My dad used to call me princess all the time. Also, you know, many people here in the city, they've named their dogs princess. In fact, it's a very popular dog name. So if they want to name their child or call their child princess, that's up to them. It does not have to be recognized by the palace. What is rubbing me the wrong way is the fact that these two are not religious, nor do they go and attend church or live under Christian values. So why have your child baptized if you're not part of the religion? Also, who could forget the book that Megan cooperated on with the authors of Finding Freedom, in which it stated that Meghan and Harry decided to forego a title for their son because they wanted him to be a private citizen until he was at an age where he could decide which path he would like to take. So they were worried about the day Prince Charles becomes king and Harry's children could inherit the titles of prince or princess. They shared their concerns with Charles, who said he would consider when he became king issuing a new letters patent, a legal instrument in the form of a written order issued by a reigning monarch that would change this style to not have a senior role in the royal family, but have a title. A senior close to the couple said at the time is just a burden. So it sounded like to me that they didn't want to automatically bestow these titles to the children and that you know, they would hold on to it, or at least this letter's patent would make it possible for the child to make the decision as they got older to take the path of going down the monarchy route or going wild in Hollywood. It sounds like giving a normal life to their children is not high on the priority list for Meghan and Harry. 
I really look forward to the day that Archie writes his tell-all memoir when he turns 21. Now let's remember, it's these same fools who are pushing this critical race theory onto the youth in which they are making kids of Caucasian descent feel bad for what they have and, in a, in a sense, oppressing them now. So how is that going to work when you add on top of that a prince and princess title and they have to go to school and recognize that they are different in so many different ways, but then add on to it the titles now are coming from an institution that they have accused of being institutionally racist? How is that going to work? They think about the bullying that's going to happen in the school. And then on top of it, the fact that Megan, who likes to draw outside of the box, is putting both their children into gender-specific boxes. So you're giving Archie a title as prince, but what if he says, Mama, I want to be a girl, and, you know, I want to be called a her. My pronouns are she and her. I don't want to be a prince. I want to be a princess. Is Megan going to say, you know what, Charles, you're going to have to, you know, edit that letter's patent to make Archie a princess? Or what if what if Lilybox says, I'm gender fluid, and I don't know, today I feel like a female, but tomorrow I might feel like a male, so I don't want to identify as a princess or a prince. What is she going to do? You see, this is what these idiots didn't think through. The fact that they push this gender equality, but at the same time, they're not allowing their children to decide for themselves what they feel or they 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 think they are anyhow i think people need to make a little bit more noise to say hey put those titles on hold till they're 18 and they can make the decision to take it for themselves because what megan is doing here is not for the children this is for her future i think it's time now for the lgbtqia trans community to step up and say hold on a second what you're doing to your child is wrong by assigning gender to them when they should have the opportunity to choose for themselves. I mean, how much lower can this couple go? Now they're using their children as pawns in order to stay latched on to this family, the family who they trashed and accelerated the deaths of two very beloved family members, one of them being the queen? Like, when are they going to realize that it's time to cut the head of the snake off and be done with it. A blind item came out where it said, wait, so they are not anti-title? I'm so confused why someone so averse to titles wanted their daughter to have one. Also, just as an FYI, there's a church of the same denomination five minutes from their house where the daughter could have been christened instead of driving crossed out Two hours taking a plane, being met by the staff and security who did drive the two hours and having a bishop perform the service. Though things would be awkward because they would have to explain why, they never actually go to the church. There's always something with Megan, and there's always something up her sleeve when she chooses people to engage with her. Now, I don't know why the Episcopalian Church allowed this to happen, considering they are not a part of the church or they've never visited it. So I wonder, did Meghan and Harry give some type of donation or is there something else that's going on here? This guy, I'm not saying that he's not a man of God, but he was chief of staff to former U.S. President Richard Nixon. So that has you thinking, well, remember Watergate? Yeah. Anyhow. I did try to call the Episcopal Diocese of Los Angeles today because as an Episcopalian, I am equally concerned about how they allowed somebody who does not contribute or follow religious practices of the Anglican Church and being allowed to be baptized into it. What is the point of doing that if you're not of faith? And I'd just like to understand more, so I'll let you guys know what I learn, if I can get through. If indeed the, this couple haven't stepped foot in this church and just sort of dialed up the archbishop without even meeting him, and he did this service, like, on a on-demand type thing, I would be curious to understand if that's something that's offered to anybody. Because I'm sure it's not. I'm sure that there's a waiting list, and I'm sure that 
there are certain requirements like stepping foot into the church and meeting some of the congregation, I would think. I mean, we have literally witnessed Meghan Markle spit in the face of God. And I don't take this too lightly because she has been, in fact, mocking the religion by doing this because you're not serious. Anyhow, to finish this video on a lighter note, I'm telling you, Yankee Wally is never going away. What do Lily Bucks and Yankee Wally, aka Sadie Quinlan, now have in common? They both can be called princess. Did you know that Sadie means princess? So we wouldn't be wrong if we called Lily Bucks Sadie, Bet, and Diana as an alternate because I think it's just poetic justice. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all I have for you today. Let me know your thoughts. As always, I will be back with more content, but until then, please be safe and I will talk to you later. Bye. It was such a broad. <laughs>